happy to be here and to present you the Apprentices Enthusiastic Guide to Pandas, or how to look at the world through the gentle eyes of one, for example. The word apprentice might describe the world of a beginner or a being who embarks on the wonderful journey of learning. Shall we? I am Ingrid. I love um, palachinkas. <laughs> I am a developer at Radar Services in Vienna and I study the flute on the meadows of the University of Arts in Graz. Or this is at least how I like to think about it. So, the pandas soon realized there is no way they are going to survive the hardships of this world. They needed a fresh view over the world and its intrinsic mechanisms. This is how in the midst of the forest, a high-performative library emerged, a powerful toolkit for data structures and data analysis. Pandas bite, you know? Let's import this long-dreamed library. At this point, I have to warn you, this is not the full enthusiastic guide. I had to cut some parts just in order to be able to show you the more interesting features. But if you're interested in the whole step-by-step, -step, I will post that later as well. So we import pandas as PD and our data sets, also known as all the little mysteries and quests the pandas would like to solve. From Kegel.com, we have the extinct and endangered languages in the world. It's the languages they had to master for world domination. And biodiversity in the US national parks. It's time to get to know our enemies, they said. Who are we going to share our prey with? The pandas data frame. It holds the precious data from the data set. Think of an Excel spreadsheet, or forget about the Excel spreadsheet altogether. Think of a rice paddy with rows and columns, like this. Pandas allows us to read data from many formats, like the Excel spreadsheets or the comma-separated values, SQL databases, and many more. Enough talking. Let's make something meaningful out of life. Let's import our data sets. Pandas.readcsv. We have idiomas for languages and species for our species data set. Now, this is the point where I left out some of the um, dropping the columns and removing just in order to be able to go on to more interesting things. So what I wanted to start with was renaming the columns, which is very easy because we can just use a dictionary called columns and um, put as a key value the old name and as the value, the new name. And we choose short names in order to make it easier to work with the data set. In place equals true, so we uh, forever. <laughs> we don't make a copy, we just save it everything in our idiomas. So now I will present the first data set. We have the name of the language, in this case, uh, Sicilian, for example, the country it is being spoken in, mm, the endangerment degree, its speakers, the latitude and the longitude. So data types, for example, float, integer, boolean, category, an object, objects, hold various data types like float or the NAN values and string. 
So whenever we have a string column, we will see an object like here. If we write idiomas.dtypes, we see the data, the pandas data type for every of our columns. We have objects and floats. Okay, but what are categories? We specified them. Let's see. Categoricals are a pandas data type, which correspond to categorical variables in statistics. A variable which can take on only a limited and usually fixed number of possible values. Yes, but what are categories? Well, if we would compare them with the um, houses in Harry Potter, let's say, we would only have one option to choose from. A fixed number of houses, a fixed number of options, and a fixed number, uh, I mean, only one of them to pick. <coughs> so, in our idiomas data set, our degree of endangerment would make a good category because we have a limited number of values. If we look again at our data set with idiomas.info, memory usage deep, the memory usage deep parameter makes a deep inspection of all object D types. Otherwise, it only guesses what is inside. Mm, we see that the memory usage, the last row, is around 600 kilobytes. And we can remember this for later. So now, switching to categorical data with categorical D types. First, we filter. Filter will come back again soon. But first, before switching or on our endangerment column, we just filter out the values that are definitely endangered. And we time it. We see 250 microseconds. Now we change. We import the categorical D type and we write our categories in a list in the order that we would like to have them. So from vulnerable, less dangerous to extinct. And all of this we save to degree of endangerment, categorical D types, categories are our categories that we just wrote. Then to our column endangerment, we say dot S type and we put the categories in. Mm, all of this we give again to our column. So in the last row, idiomas endangerment column, we put all of this in. And now, after we've done this transformation, after uh, um, converting it to a categorical type, we can see that if we filter again the definitely endangered values, we only spend 100 microseconds of our lives waiting for it. Okay, but what type does pandas actually use for categories? How does it work? Why is it so much faster? Well, if it, we look at it like this, um, our values are stored as a list and pandas only looks at their index. So now we, we can see them in a dictionary with the key as the index value. So every time we want a vulnerable, pandas thinks, oh, it's a zero. Oh, it's a four. So we don't have to clutter our minds with many, many strings. We only have to remember a few numbers. So our memory will also say thanks. If we check the data frame that info again. So before, if you remember, we Mm, we occupied 600 kilobytes of memory. Now, if we look on the last row, the memory usage is only 433 because we mm, save so much more space through knowing exactly what number each category is, each value from the category. 
So, we go on. In a data set, we have to spend laborious efforts with dealing with the missing data because it is often malformed or empty and with the data frame that is null, we can find these entries. So in our idiomas data set, in our languages data set, we look is null.sum, so many um, speakers entries which are missing. We can fill these entries if we have an idea um, what we would like to fill them with. So for, ex for this example, we wrote dot speakers dot fill an A zero. So we replace all the NAN values with a zero. And then because we don't have any more um, of them, we can convert this column as type integer, like we did before with the category. This, uh, so instead of having a float column, like it was before, we have an integer column. If we look again, now we have no more missing speakers values. Now, to go a bit to the species data set. Um, th I found a very interesting and strange uh, example of malformed data. If we look with species.shape, we can see how many rows there are in this table and how many columns which describe these rows. And we can see that the last column, the column named unnamed 13, has only five values which are, um, which are not null in this data set. And it was strange, so I looked at it and with not null, we can actually see the values which, are, um, which have a value. And if we look here at the common names column and at the record status column and on from here, this rows shifted from the left to the right. So on the record status column, we actually have the names and so on. Like, Mm, instead of mm, conservation status, they all switched, all these five rows, they switched on the unnamed column. How do we fix this? It's um, surprisingly easy. I didn't expect that. I will go through it. So we have the shifted rows, the rows where the values are not null. We have the shifted columns that we all wrote in a list with their right order. And in indexes, we write the indexes of the shifted rows. Now, all of this, we use species.lock. With lock, we can uh, specify certain rows, so the indexes of the rows that are shifted, and certain columns, the shifted columns. And we take them again and with dot shift minus one, we shift ones to the left on the axis of one, which means the column axis. Axis of zero would be the row axis. So this is how it looks now. On the common names, we have the names and on the record status and so on, everything is matching again. At this point, I also, in silence, removed some things from the data set so that I can present you only stuff that we will actually speak about. So we have, I will present it. It's called now especies, like in Spanish. And we have a park name, a class, the scientific name, the common name of the animals, Occurrence, abundance, and conservation. Now, series that value counts counts for us how often it spots a value. 
if we go shortly back to the, our languages data set, we say idiomas, countries, value counts, show me the first 10 entries. And we see how many counts there are, like how many, what are the countries which have most entries and most endangered languages. United States, Brazil, India, Indonesia, to name a few. Another option is to group by. How many people are in total in each group? How do we do this? We use the method group by. By what do we want to group by? By endangerment. And what do we want to group by endangerment? The speakers. Speakers dot sum in this case, because we want to know how many of them are in total. Okay, most people are in the vulnerable category. Can you show me this as a picture, Mr. Painas? <coughs> aye, aye, with a plot pie. First, we remove the extinct category. We will use again the filter that we spoke about because there are so less speakers that it kind of messes up a bit our plot. And this is how it looks like. So the vulnerable and the definitely endangered are, have the most speakers. Because I spoke so much about filtering, I will show how the pandas wanted to filter their nonsensical superstitions. What does a filter do? It filters specific rows which fulfill certain requirements. They are just lists containing true or, fo of or false equal to the number of rows in the data frame. And if we apply such a filter directly to our data set, we can go fully berserk like this, where we apply many filters at once. For example, the number of speakers is higher than 1,000. The country is Peru. The degree of endangerment, which with a category we can also use in a filter, we can specify it can be equal or higher than severely endangered. And we specify we only want to see the columns from the beginning to the speakers in a sample, which means we always get a surprise which rows we, we will get. So these are four examples of the languages that are disappearing in Peru. But we can also create our own filter with a dictionary or a function. We contain, we Mm, create the contains moose function that takes an animal and it returns true if moose is in that mm, is that in that animal. So all of this we map on the common names column, um, which is so it means that we apply this function on every row of our data set. And when we count the values, we see that we also got things that are not as like the moose we expected. They are more moosey. So we try to apply another filter. We say that we only want those entries which are in the class mammal. So if we count the values again, we get the right type of moose. Also, we can make in pandas a bar chart horizontal. We will first filter out the vascular plants because there are so many that we don't see anything else. So we filter them out and we count the values. We write everything to plot dot bar h for bar horizontal. And then we see the, that there are many, many birds in these parks and insects and fungi. Now we enter a new land, the last land of this talk the mystifying land of accessors. 
But what are accessors? Well, they are properties that serve as an interface to access additional methods. For example, if we look pandas.series.accessors, we have some examples of the series accessors, the cat and the string, cat for category, dt for dtime. Oops. So, like we said, accessors provide a huge number of useful methods, depending on the type a column has. In this example, I'm showing the string methods that we get to dot string, dot this accessor. Just to name a few, mm, swap case, or join, or get dummies. Let's try this out. When we saw the park names, we saw every time it's written Acadia National Park. That's not necessary because we already know that. So, if we use these methods, we can easily say string.replace national park with an empty string. And then, because we will still have the space, we will say string.strip. And here we have our result that for every park we will only see their name. We can also do this for our languages. So we first um, change our column countries to a type string. And then if we look countries.string.containsLovakia, we can actually see not only the countries, like if we would look at this um, country uh, equals Slovakia, we wouldn't get, get these entries because we would only get the entries that have uh, only the name Slovakia. Like this, we get also the entries that only contain Slovakia, but also other things. And we have a sample of the, of the languages that are disappearing from Slovakia. But what if we want our own accessor? What if we want to be very uh, different? Um, well, we can register one. Uh, we can go to the Office of Registration and register a series accessor, for example, with the name Panda Likes Bamboo. Um, if we look down, the validate method is very important and it should not miss even if it doesn't have, as here, uh, other things in it. So we define the method is bamboo with the string dot lower dot contains, like we had before, that contains bamboo. And now we access our column common names dot panda likes bamboo, which stands for our accessor, which is like string or cat, dot our method that we just created, is bamboo. This way, we manage to see that the pandas get so much bamboo as they want, for example, the bamboo orchid and the Japanese knotweed and the arrow bamboo, so they are very happy. As another example of what we can register is the data frame accessor, in this case called panda revolution. The static method this time that we under no circumstances can forget will raise an error if we don't have a latitude and a longitude. Why is this important? Because the next method, world map, is a uh, plot, a scatter plot, um, with longitude, latitude, a title, and a label. The pandas made it. They managed to achieve world domination. With our panda revolution accessor, we can access our world map and see where they spread everywhere. 
thank you very much for your attention. And you can find the talk later on GitHub. Thank you. <laughs>